Welcome back to my channel, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ruchi Kesha. I'm a Vedic astrologer and a numerologist. And today I'm going to talk about Vedic numerology, a topic very close to my heart, because I began my journey uh, in the world of occult science as a numerologist with the science of numerology. Okay. And today in this video, you will understand the difference between the standard numerology, which is popular and which has been practiced everywhere, which I started with. You know, and what is you know Vedic numerology all about? What is the difference between both of them? And how does Vedic approach to this to this beautiful science of numerology benefit you even more? Okay, so let us begin that. And you know, before I talk about any topic, I always you know give my uh, respect and namaskar to Guru and Ganesh and ask for their blessings. So the right knowledge flows through me to you. All right, let's begin. See, when I started with numerology, the Chaldean method, okay, the, Ch the Chaldean method is the one which is uh, successful, it works, and any other method besides this is, I have not seen it working, okay? So there's Pythagoras and some other methods as well, but they are not successful. So if you want to know more about that, you can research on your own. But the method that works is uh, successfully and has a higher strike rate is the Chaldean method of numerology. All right. And when I studied that method and when I applied it and when I started my journey as a numerologist with that science, I always felt there was a limit to that science. You know, there were boundaries. Okay. It was a very generalized approach. And to be honest, when we when we talk about occult science, you know, and when healing has to be done, it cannot have a standard generalized approach. Because no two people born on the same date or day have a similar life or similar traits or a similar way of thinking. You know, everything is different. You have distinctive features with people born on the same date or day as well. All right. So you cannot have the same approach. For example, you know, this is the month of November. And uh, for example, let's say 6th of November. How many people were born on this planet? And if all of them came to you for numerology, can you give them the same thing? The same numbers? Can you apply the same method to each one of them? No. It will work for some of them, but it, it cannot work for the entirety of them, not for all of them. So there is a flaw. You know, there is a flaw. There are limitations when it comes to the Chaldean method. Okay? Because we have to consider, see, at the end of the day, numerology, vastu, palmistry, you know, all these are just different branches of the same science. Like different slices of pizza. Somebody has this, somebody has that. You know, so when you combine them all together, at the core is astrology, the science of planets. So things cannot be different with, you know, the understanding of planet, planets cannot be different with Vastu or numerology or palmistry and be different when it comes to astrology. The core has to be the same. Okay. And then you, okay, you focus specifically on certain streams with the knowledge that you have at the core. All right. So, you know, when I got initiated into Vedic astrology, there began the research and uh, the exploration into how can one add to this limited science of numerology of the Chaldean method. Okay. How to push the boundary, how we can take it further. And that's when I could, you know, combine the forces, the knowledge of Vedic astrology with numerology. And that's how Vedic numerology came about. And it's not, it's not that something I found. It's been there since eternity. You know, that the knowledge is derived from the rishis, the sages. We are just, you know, just um, unveiling layer by layer with research and studies. Okay. So Chalin, I felt, is limited. Uh, has a generalized approach and it cannot be uh, it should not stay there okay 
the boundaries have to be pushed. All right. And the need for a more individual approach. Let's say, let's say there are two people who are born on the same date and they come to me for a consultation regarding pneumatology. It is very absurd for me to give both of them the same numbers, the same lucky numbers for their bank account, for their vehicle, for their mobile phone number. You know, science cannot be so easy, cannot be so generalized. Every individual has a distinctive journey on this planet, has a very distinctive, specific destiny that a person is born with. And one has, one has to identify that. Okay, Bollywood superstar Shah Rukh Khan is born 2nd of November. I don't remember the year. But let's say on that very day, many people were born around the same time. Are all of them superstars? India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi. There would have been people who are born at the same date and time, just, just you know, seconds here and there, minutes here and there. Are all of them Prime Minister leaders of a nation? They are not. So, with Chaldean method, you know, there's a blockage. Get blocked there. You don't have an individual approach. Now, how do we go around to have an individual approach when it comes to numerology? By by combining it with the knowledge of Vedic astrology. And how do you do that? So before I talk about that, for those of you who are not aware of which planets, uh, which numbers are assigned to which planets, they are here in front of you. So the planets are in the weekday order and the numbers are assigned to them on the right-hand side. So for example, if you're born on dates that add up to 1, like 1, 10, 19, 28, Okay, so you're a number one personality. So if a person is born on 10th of March, he's a number one personality. So the planet that's governing his date of birth is Surya, Sun. And similarly, you go through the entire table. For those who are born on number four, 22nd of July, he's a number four personality. And Rahu governs him, his date of birth. Okay, so... This is the order of numbers in numerology that are assigned to planets. Now, how do you apply this? Okay, how do you apply this? So, and before we know how to apply it, we have to know why do we have to apply it? What is the use of it? Okay, why do you use the science of numbers? Exactly. See, it's very simple. Every person has a strong planet in his birth chart. A strong yoga, a strong combination. Okay. A planet that has given him maximum good luck in life. So when we study the birth chart of a person and we arrive at that planet, okay. For example, we, we study XYZ person chart, and let's say Venus is very strong in a chart. And Venus has very good, fortunate yogas or combinations in that person's birth chart. So the energy of Venus will give him more good luck, will bless him. And with if he attaches himself and if he activates that energy of Venus day in, day out in his life, he will rise further. He will see better outcomes for his efforts, positive outcomes, more fortunate outcomes. Okay, He will see rapid growth in life. Then compared to a person who is not aware of which is his strongest planet or energy, how can he activate his good luck? And how can he see better outcomes for his efforts in life? So this is why you need to know who is giving you the maximum luck? Who can take you to the top from where you are? Which planet can, you know, open the door of blessings in your life? And once we know that this planet or this specific planet or these energies are lucky or auspicious for a person, we assign their numbers or their energy in the person's life by way of, you know, of flat numbers, home numbers, office numbers, cell phone numbers, you know, bank account numbers. Okay. And also, also for those who are into sales or, you know, sales business, 
retail business so, or services. They can use this energy to arrive at their price point for their service or their product. Okay, for lucky dates, for auspicious dates. And they can be used for n number of reasons. Lucky date for opening your office, your store, opening your bank accounts, buying something, buying your vehicle, purchasing a home, meetings with clients, important clients. Okay, so n number of things can be done with lucky dates, if you know them. Fortunate colors. Which color can give you fame in life? Which specific color can help you increase your income? Which color vehicle should you buy? What happens if you buy your vehicle in the wrong color? It can bring you bad luck. You know, there are some people who um, suddenly buy a new vehicle and disaster follows it in their life. For example, let's say a person you know, you know, bought a black car. And just after that, his business is going down, problems with relationships and so on have begun. And for another person who's bought a black car, he's risen in life. He's got married, his business has, you know, he's made double profits than before. What is happening here? For the one who saw success after that black car, for that person, black was a lucky color. Black Rahu satin or energies that govern black color were giving him good luck. While for the other person, it was bad luck, not fortunate. So black is not bad at all. But it, it is beneficial for very few people on this planet. Mostly people in power. If you see the head of states, presidents, prime ministers, or billionaires, they always have vehicles which are black in color. So it's a very specific color. It's a very specific energy. It is not suitable for everyone. So this is how. Because see, every number, every color, you know, every energy will have a relation with a specific planet. So the moment you add those colors or numbers in your life, you're activating those planets in your life. Now, if they are beneficial for you, superb. You'll see a good time in life. But if by chance they are not good for you, it can prove disastrous for your life. Okay, so this is where as a science of Vedic numerology kicks in and every person on this planet who wants to achieve success, who dreams of you know, achieving a success, you know, becoming something larger than life, it is vital for that person to understand which energies are good for him, fortunate for him, and which he should avoid. You know, h &I individuals, you know, very rich people, they always buy vehicles in certain colors and certain number patterns. They wear certain colors every day, day in, day out to their work. They know something that you don't know. Okay. Now let's take it further. You know, let's take it further and uh, we look at the use of it. Use of numerology with Vedic astrology. The use of Vedic numerology. How do we use it? So this is a chart of superstar, legend, Mr. Amitabh Bachchan. And he was born on 11th of October, 1942. So 11 is his date of birth. And when you add it, you get two. So he's a number two personality governed by the planet moon, which we saw in the previous table in the presentation. Okay, so according to Chaldean numerology, okay, according to the standard Chaldean numerology method, his luckiest numbers are number one, number two, number seven. So if Mitchell, sorry, so if Mr. Bachchan comes to me, okay, to consult, and he's asking me which which home number should I buy, which bungalow number should I buy, which vehicle number should I buy. Which phone number should I have? Okay. As a numerologist, 
Kohli has the knowledge of Chaldean. I'll tell you, Mr. Bachchan, okay, you buy, I know you assign yourself, you know, numbers that add up to one, energies of one or two or seven in life, okay? So for anything, for your phone numbers, for your home, your office, okay? Wherever, wherever you want to use it, make sure they add up to number one, two or seven. And I'll tell him to go for one more because that's the luckiest number out of these three. He'll be like, okay, fine, done. But that's a very limited approach. Because anybody who is born on 11th of October will have the same set of numbers which are lucky for them. Now the way of the universe is not so simple and started. It's complicated. It's layered. It's a labyrinth. Okay, so now Mr. Bachchan comes to a Vedic astrologer who has a knowledge of numerology and Vedic astrology as well. What will that Vedic astrologer do? You know, he'll tell Mr. Bachchan. Mr. Bachchan, I'm looking at your chart. You're born on 11th of October. Okay, your Aquarius ascendant, your moon sign is Libra. All right, which energy is most beneficial for Mr. Bachchan in the shot and I see okay Jupiter exalted can give huge fame and success I look at a destiny chart the Namanj and I see wow Jupiter exalted over there as well Vargotama Jupiter exalted and placed in the 10th house of the Navamsha any planet in the 10th house Navamsha especially benefic exalted strong Vargotama can give Big blessings for finance, wealth, name, fame, power. Okay? So I see, all right, Jupiter is very strong. Okay? It can bless Mr. Bachchan in a huge way. And then I look at other things, you know. So if Mr. Bachchan is asking me for bank account numbers, I look at his second house of wealth, 11th house of income. I'll check, you know, I'll calculate his Hora Lagna. Hora Lagna is used for wealth. I'll check the Aruda for this, of the second house, of the 11th house. All right. And I'll see. Like the Aruda Pata of the second house of wealth goes over here in Scorpio. I'll see whether Jupiter is suspecting them or not. Okay. And many other things. And then I'll see in the Navamsh as well. Okay. Let's let's connect the energies of Jupiter in Bachchan's life, Mr. Bachchan's life, okay? So I'll tell Mr. Bachchan, you know, we have to involve the energies of Jupiter in your life. In numbers, so back account numbers, phone numbers, okay? The number three. So this is how you do it. The approach cannot be standard or limited in life when it comes to the science of occult subjects. So this is an example chart. There are many other things that as a Vedic numerologist or an astrologer you look at, you look at the Arudhapadas, you look at the special ascendants known as Hora Lagna, Varnada Lagna, Arhuda Lagna, okay, to arrive at specific energies. Here I'm just giving you a simple example. So that you can understand. If I, you know, start talking more complicated uh, terms, uh, you won't get a hang of it. So you see, Jupiter, exalted, very strong. The Navamsha as well, Vargotama. Okay, in the 10th, any, any benefit plan in the 10th house of Tina is very powerful and it can bless you. So, this is how you apply the knowledge of numerology and Vedic astrology. And the outcome is miraculous. Because this is now an individual approach. Here I am taking in account your birth chart. And what is best for you, not for every number two person on this planet. Only for you, curated. So this will work wonders for you. Okay. Moving on. With numerology, you also, you know, calculate fortunate names, especially for newborns. 
there there are many clients who come to me for lucky names or for fortunate names for the newborn child so how do we arrive at that okay we'll come to these charts later when we understand this example so here is a birth chart of former prime minister hi lady and there are gandhi now generally generally the approach in india is that when a person is born you know people look at the moon sign rashi the chandra rashi and accordingly name the child now think for a second can this be right can this be right it is not right it is a very general approach and we'll see that in in the gandhi chart okay so this is a birth chart the rashi chart and where is the moon the moon is placed in capricorn all right makar rashi so let's see which names come out from makar rashi makar rashi capricorn is over here and the sounds are po cha chi ki ku ka ko ga pi the other sounds those are the words okay is a name from these letters or these sounds no they are not her name is indira one of the most powerful leaders of india then why did they not name her from her moon sign from her rashi so here here like i said before you have to find out the strongest planet in the chart the planet that has given you raj yoga okay that is connected to beneficial yogas in your chart the planet that can bless you with the highest success and help you tap into your full potential in life so for indra gandhi we take the name indira and the sound is e okay and we see where it is it is gone to taurus prashab rashi taurus sign e u a o in this in this bracket now we'll see where taurus is placed so taurus is our 11th house all right and we have jupiter placed over there prahaspati okay and prahaspati is also placed again in the d9 in the same sign taurus which means it is virgo tama it has become a very strong planet in a chart so here okay that's a good thing second we look at the katapyadi varga and we look at e from a name and there are e so where is that it's a vowel and who's the overlord of that vowel sun surya all right so we look at surya in a chart surya 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 placed in the fifth house is the lord of the second house now how is this right for her how is the name and there are right for her okay we look at the 10th house i discussed this in my previous video in the at the video for the 10th house and 10th lord okay this is a simhasan yoga this is a raj yoga okay the 10th lord in the second house is a very powerful raj yoga and it can make a person a leader of a nation so the 10th lord is mars placed in the sign leo in the second house the ruler of leo is surya the dispositor of the raj yoga is surya and it very surya placed in the fifth house the house of fame power okay and surya and mars have an exchange so it becomes even more powerful yoga it creates a very strong leader all right and you see so whoever named her looked at her birth chart and saw the potential she can reach in life and accordingly gave her the right sound okay and if we look at mr bachan shot you know mr bachan used to li live in a residence in in a house by the name of pratiksha previously i think that's where he saw his downfall okay so pa we have to look at first we look at the katapyati varga pa is in saturn all right and we look at here pa pa kanya rashi virgo or we look at the sebastian chart virgo is the eighth house kanya rashi is falls at the eighth house now eighth house is generally not that great it creates debts certain troubles okay and saturn is a karaka of sorrow the significator of the 8th house 6th house and 12th house sorrow troubles debts delays obstacles 
even though it's the lagna lot so then why did why did mr bachan decide to move into a bungalow which has a name jalsa and he also has a office by the name of chanak so the sound is j j now j is the letter which will come from venus okay whereas venus gone yeah j jalsa chanak now why would mr bachan again go for a name of venus because venus is placed in the eighth house but you have to see here venus is the lord of the fourth house fourth house is sukha bhava the house of happiness and comforts okay venus is the dispositor of the ascendant lord as well saturn okay venus is a dispositor of moon and we also look at your home from the fourth house from room so 1 2 3 4 4 capricorn we hand lucky look at that a4 the aruda part of the fourth house is also there saturn is a lord of capricorn where is saturn gone sign of taurus who is a lord of taurus venus okay so venus is over here all right so he went for a name for his home from the letter j which is governed by venus all right so this is how you know differences this is what is the difference between your standard approach of numerology the child in a way and then when you combine the knowledge of vedic astrology to it so sum it up sum it up what is the best way for a person today who wishes to become a numerologist or you know is doing numerology how you can help your client more than others so first first prerequisite is that you have the knowledge of vedic astrology the knowledge of planets we should know which planets are friendly with each other which are not exaltation debilitation what is varkotama what is which which planet you know the combinations of raj yogas and duri yogas you should know that so when you have the knowledge you combine it with numerology okay can you push the envelope of that science so for example if somebody who comes to me for a lucky name for their newborn or for their company what do i do is first of all i look at their birth chart i see okay this person is born on number 1 all right number 1 date i see which planet is most beneficial in the chart and accordingly i i you know pick up the sound all right i pick up the governing planet of the letter and i give them the sound and the letter and and i make sure that the total the total energy of the name adds up to a fortunate number as per child numerology so now we've got the sound right we've got the letter right and we've got the number right as well triple whammy okay and similarly you know for a person who, who comes to me and who wishes to know which numbers or energies he can use for his bank account numbers cell phone numbers for his home office and so on i look at the planets that are governing the financial houses in a chart and which planet has the strongest say for his financials which energy of planet can bless you know his status mm-hmm. his financial status in life and according to him okay you know like for mr bachan i would say mr bachan you should have a bank account number that adds up to 3 jupiter so that is how you do it even if, if mr bachan is born on what 11th of october is number 2 so no where number 3 becomes us lucky number according to chalvin but now this is this is where vedic astrology kicks in and tells you okay here see what is who is the most beneficial for him similarly for gemstone for him blue sapphire was very auspicious lagna lord saturn is lagna ascendant lord ascendant lord is always beneficial no matter where that planet is placed is always beneficial okay so 
and also also look at the aruda padas that see aruda padas are the advanced you know for those who know they'll understand this uh, a10 aruda of the 10th house aruda of the 11th house aruda of the 3rd house aruda of the 4th house so they are all you know lauded by shani saturn shani maharaj so blue sapphire is a very lucky gemstone for him no doubt so yeah so you combine the knowledge of numerology with vedic astrology for accuracy first of all and successful outcomes for your clients okay and probably probably i'll make i'll make a few videos on and i'll talk something about you know the characteristics and what's lucky what's not lucky for number 1 number 2 3 people so on till number 9 and probably i'll do it in the coming days and i'll upload it so for those of you who are not aware or very new or still want are aware and want to know further on you know, because every person you know the topics related to numerology have been spoken about by so many people on youtube but i believe i believe every person has always something new to add so with that intent probably i'll make those videos and i'll upload it so hopefully in the coming days all right so thank you so much for watching this video if you have liked it found it useful informative press the like button do comment i would love to hear your feedback and you know how this video helped you all right hari om tat sat god bless you all